Hello, this is David D. Hilster. I am a critical thinker, dissident scientist, and if you are not science woke, then this is the place for you. No, I'm not talking about flat earthers, clients, change deniers, or Trump. I'm talking about the Big Bang, relativity, plate tectonics, particle physics, quantum mechanics, anything fundamental to physics and cosmology. You won't find anything like this on YouTube, so make sure you go down below, click on the subscribe button and the little bell next to you, you'll be alerted to when our next video drops. Well, I had a great discussion in my last video, and I'm going to tell you what happened. It's a lot easier than me trying to explain it. A lot of times you get lost here, so I just write them down now. What happened? Well, Dave says neutrinos don't exist. Dave cites the website neutrinos.autodynamics.org. Subscribers look up arguments against Karazani. Autodynamics neutrino and the neutrino claim find a blistering argument against all of this, Karazani's work and the idea that neutrinos don't exist, and they challenge David to defend himself in Karazani and neutrino non-existence. So I'm here and I promised my subscribers I'd get to this. I'm going to get to it right away because it's been, uh, when I saw that, I, I got my dander up and uh, I'm going to tell you what went wrong. Well, there's two things that went wrong, basically, and that is a failure in critical thinking by our subscribers. And please don't take this personally. I'm, I'm here to help you. Remember, I'm your science therapist. If we were all critical thinkers, I wouldn't be here. I'd be on a beach somewhere. I don't know. Uh, failing badly at debates by AD haters. That's the second thing. The people who are making these arguments, these blistering arguments, the AD being autodynamics, autodynamics being Karazani's theory that says, yes, uh, relativity is wrong. And if you take away the redundant frames, both physically and mathematically, you're going to get a new set of equations, which you can use for things like particle acceleration. You don't need the neutrino. That's all it's all about. But they fail. These AD haters fail badly at debate. I mean, not even a little bit, but really bad. So let's first take a look at the first problem that critical, and then we're failing to use critical thinking as we look into this, this whole argument of true neutrino or no, no neutrino. That is the question. What do critical thinkers do? Well, we read the premises in the words and works of an author making a claim. So you should go to that website and read about it. And you should study until you're, they are or you are convinced that they truly understand it. That if you're a critical thinker, you're going to go to it and you're going to read until you thoroughly believe that you thoroughly understand it. And these critical thinkers, they do not rely on others to do their critical thinking for them. Starting to get the picture. Well, let me just give you another picture that hits it hard, but I'm not here to do anything but tell you what I think is the truth, because at my age, there's nothing left. And here, and I'm not saying any of you have any of these reasons, but these can be reasons. And I've seen symptoms of people with these reasons. So these are actual things that I believe that happen. Reasons for failing to be a critical thinker. I'm lazy. I just want to read somebody else's idea. Oh, Dave said that neutrinos are ah, I'm just going to go find somebody who agrees or disagrees with it. And uh, I'll believe that. Emotionally attached to neutrinos for, from reading readings over the years. I've read lots about neutrinos. I know all about them. What do you think they exist? I'm just going to go find somebody who found him wrong and David wrong and Karazani. And look, Dave, look at this. I don't read it. I don't want to understand it. It takes too long. Don't really understand or think they can understand Karazani or neutrino scientists. That can be very true, that a person feels a little intimidated by this. And they shouldn't because it's pretty simple in reality. Um, but it does take time. The simpler things a lot of times take longer to understand. And then believing thought processes by others are logical without looking at the bigger picture. I call that the Harry Potter syndrome. The Harry Potter syndrome is, well, look at the logic behind all this stuff in Harry Potter. It's real. It's got to be real. I mean, look at the, all the rules. They follow the rules. There are things in their order to this. And that's what makes Harry Potter so, it's made up. So even though the arguments that you read of these people that this is why neutrinos exist, they can't be anything else, is actually what I call, is the problem is we're believing the logic in the Harry Potter world of fantasy. Well, let's take a look at Karazani's, Karazani's premises, because in debate you have to look at this and understand this. Neutrino was invented when relativity was applied to decay cases. What are decay cases? Radioactivity. So you take the relativity kinematic equations, that is kinetic energy equations, something that hits about hits something, 
and you apply that to radioactivity. Big problem, Karazani saw this when he was the age 20 to 24, uh, while he was in Argentina, and he, he was arguing vehemently with his professors. He says, you guys, why are you applying kinetic energy equation to radioactivity? If this ball, my favorite ball, is radioactive and the electrons are flying out of it, it's not because there's kinetic energy of or energy from outside the system making this happen. It's all internal. So you shouldn't be using kinetic, kinetic equations anyways, but they do. I mean, how many problems can you have? Experiments showed that the energy in, uh, energy in and energy out in decay or radioactivity was pr predicted perfectly without relativity. If you go to the page, I explain this. I think it's 0 0.036 million electron volts. Exactly what they measure, that's what they get, that's what they predict. But though they got to be more because we apply special relativity to it. And therefore, as Pauli said, if you do that, you got to make up a bunch of energy that's not there. Relativity created an extra magical energy, which had to be taken away by an invented, which it was, a uh, high penetrating, undetectable particle. Why? Because it's got to take everything away without everybody seeing. Didn't even have charge, didn't even have mass at the beginning. Again, it's not my job here to lead you. I'm lead, I can lead you to water, but I can't make you drink, as they say. Karazani's promise is number two. Special relativity is flawed because it treats inertial frames as things, and they're not. When there's only one frame in the universe, that is, there's one three-dimensional space, and you can move the origin where you want, but there's only one three-dimensional space. There's not like 17 origins. There's only one, and you can move it where it's convenient. Use our real number system or the variable number system, which is even better. Well, correcting this problem gives you Newtonian equations, which he calls the dynamic equations that do not need the neutrino and nucleus nucleus collisions and particle accelerator. He not only says the claim that there's no neutrino, he applies, he, he tells you why it's wrong, gives you the equations why it's wrong, shows you why those are the uh, answers of why it's wrong, applies those to nucleus nucleus collision, and guess what? Can explain all the energy in and all the energy out without the neutrino. How much more argument do you need on his side? Basically, simpler wins. Occam's razor. So those are his premises. Debate rules. State the premises of the opponent. Demonstrate understanding of their viewpoint. Show flaws in the argument. So what did, what, uh, what did they do? Well, let's take a look. Uh, this is the AD haters debate responses. Okay, remember what we said? He said you have to state the premises, demonstrate an understanding point of view, uh, show the flaws against. Well, basically, the first thing that comes out of the, one of the uh, arguments is ADI ad idiots, ADA idiots. So AD idiots, from the day, days when I was calling autodynamics AD, is really the combination linguistically of AD or autodynamics plus idiots. Now, this is a disqualification in any, any debate class, in any school or forum. What else do I need to say? I'm not using this as a scape to get out of it because I'm going to talk about the rest. But when you hear that, you say, I guess, well, but I guess it's not true on the internet, meaning you can just make, how do you say, hateful remarks. You can de de uh, denigrate people. You can emotionally attack them. You can do everything except a, a scientific argument for the premises this is name calling also show this name calling also shows a high degree of motion and territorialism which is a red flag that opponents are not going to address the original premises they will dig in and defend not debate and that's exactly what happens if you go through their arguments they are going to tell you dig their heels in and tell you why all the beams they turn on and all the ones they, all the detectors they find have to be a neutrino. But if we go back to what we're supposed to be looking at, I right hear they don't state the premises of the opponent. They just say, oh, you just think the neutrinos, you 80 idiots. They do exist and here's why. Demonstrate the understanding of their point of view. They don't, they don't talk about any of these premises. If they do, they do it in passing, but they say it's irrelevant because the neutrino, all they care about is their glorious neutrino exists. 
So, going forward, let's keep going. Opponents do not address any of the premises, except for the conclusion, which is one of them, that neutrinos don't exist. They give many reasons why particles they see or produce can be only the neutrino. They do not address the original the origin of the neutrino or dismiss it as not re or they dismiss it as not relevant i've actually talked to people and they and i tell them about karazani what he discovered and they go it's not relevant that's old stuff what and again in the debate class class you lose you basically say okay um a, the guy who wrote 80 haters let's see here according to did you state your premises of the other people no you just picked on one thing and uh, you're getting a bad grade for that because in debate, you're supposed to look at all the premises of the argument. You fixated on one and only talked about it, so that's bad. Uh, number two, um, you, besides not talking about any of the premises, all you did was show that you didn't understand anything of what was being said by the other opponent, which is, is the most important thing when you do a debate is understanding your opponent. And you did not argue against any of the premises that he put put down there. There was no mention of any of that stuff. All you talked about was a consequence of his premises. <sighs> they do not address any of the relativity claims by Karazani. They only attack neutrino existence, as I say. Looking at, at their neutrino existence arguments. Let's take a look at that. Well, Dr. Unscrew, myself, and many others see the standard particle models completely lost, that we want to throw away any invented particles like the neutrino W and Z particles, quarks and Higgs boson, all of these things. We used to discover particles and then name them. Now we pretend that we can come up with a system. And that system, if you look at it as a system, the invented particles are messy, unphysical, and arbitrary. They're bad. I mean, even if you don't know anything about particle physics and someone explains it to you, you're going to think to yourself, this is a model? This is considered a standard model? Good model? This is standard? Our best shot at it? Extraterrestrials are probably laughing their heads off at us. Or those junior high school students who, who created us all, and this is just a big junior high project of, of higher beings. Who knows? <laughs> Um, what are they detecting or making in all these things that they're talking about that have to be neutrinos? Again, I'm not even going to get in those arguments because in a debate, you have to debate with Karazani stuff, uh, premises and they don't. All they do is dig in and talk about it. Well, let's talk about it. Let's just, if that's all they want to talk about, they fail to address the yes, the premise and findings. Yep, I said that. Therefore, they did not argue into existence the neutrino because his argument is against. So... What that means is, in a debate, they go, okay, I'm the debate judge. You have not argued anything, so a neutrino non-existence stands. Therefore, so you are detecting or producing something that is not a neutrino until you can prove otherwise that Karazani's premises are wrong. Get it? Not look, I'm not getting mad at you subscribers. I'm just getting mad at these kinds of debates and these things going on and people grabbing a hold of it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Why shouldn't you do it? Well, let's just take a look at a couple last two things here. Neutrino existence. Let's just look at it from the, the critical thinkers communities. Uh, member Tom Lockyer and others also argue against the neutrino. I'm not the only one. Karazani's not the only one. They didn't even know about Karazani stuff. And C C C P N C N P S members uh, include it or use it for their ether or in their models without regard for its origin. So what do I tell them all the time? Hey, Jeff Yee, I love your model. Throw away the name, the neutrino, because it ain't it. Because you have not argued, like anybody else, that the neutrino non-existence argument that Karazani is, f is flawed. I still like your, your stuff, changes zero of what I think of your model. But don't use something that doesn't exist just because it's, you're doing the same thing as mainstream science. Find something that fits your data that you like and you sort of, I'm going to use it. 
And that, well, the reason I'm going to use it is because then mainstream will love my stuff because I'm using their same particles. No, they won't. That's a fallacy. Never has happened. Never will. So at least let's all understand Karazani's arguments until any of you can argue it away. Call it something else. It's simple. So the conclusion. Critical thinkers have failed. They failed, critical thinkers failed at an opportunity to learn something about Karazani's work. Because you go running out and try to read somebody else's stuff and say, oh, the trade does exist. And you don't read the whole story. You don't do what critical thinkers do. One of the things I've done all my life, and I have to give myself credit for this, is I will read in the eyes of the author. I want to see this person spent decades sometimes working on this and i want to find out i said whoa what kind of world what kind of thing did they find that's why i like jeff yees even though there are things fundamentally at the very bottom of his model that i think are problematic i don't look at it that way i look at all the things he found all the amazing things he did how he took the wave equation and made it equal to equals mc squared that's what i look at so i look at it and i look at it as consistent with his model yeah, he makes certain assumptions. Like, you know, there's an ultimate particle, maybe. I, I don't know. Regardless, I look at it for what he's doing. I do not say, oh, it's wrong because the standard model is wrong and I know my model's better because of these things. I couldn't do that. But that's not the way I look at it. I look at it as like a new world, sort of like a Minecraft world or a new, new game that you've been to or a, a new place on the planet you've never been to to see new trees and new mountains and all that stuff. That's the way I look at it. That's what you should look at. Karasani stuff is amazing. But you lost the opportunity by going and saying, well, Dave, look at this biting argument here and here and here. Well, we know why we failed. I tell you, told you, uh, go back, study what you should be doing instead of that. And of course, the 80 haters sound biting, but they have no teeth and fail miser miserably at debate. They would be disqualified for their language they use. They'd be disqualified because they, they address no premises of what Karazani and only uh, a symptom or result of those premises. They fail miserably. Are they, basically, folks, what you guys discovered is people are have a particle or something they call a particle that is happening and they can reproduce and it's got certain characteristics that may look like a neutrino but of course a neutrino doesn't exist so you know it looks like a unicorn it's got that one horn and all that but you're calling a unicorn and unicorns don't exist i hope this unties everything and please remember very much now now that we've been through this you really need to stay critical and stay thinking on your own. I'm Dave DeHilster. I'm your science therapist. I really appreciate your comments. I really appreciate your positivism and listening to these the arguments I give you. I do not chastise you or blame you for what you do because we're not taught critical thinking and that's what I'm here for. And I've been around it maybe a little longer than you so I can see these symptoms because I fell for the same things. I myself say, fell for the same things. It's just that I've learned and I'm passing to you because I'm your science therapist. Ciao for now.